We are recording. Okay, hello everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee to order at 6.01 p.m. on October 9th, excuse me, October 29th, 2020. Uh, we are being recorded because we are still meeting remotely because of the pandemic. So I want to first have a roll call attendance so that any watchers uh, live of, the, of, of this meeting or of the recording later when it is posted to the town's YouTube page uh, will know who we all are and what organizations, if any, we are representing. So I'm sure we all appear differently on our screen. So I'll just go through a list I have. So first the at-large members. So please just say here and wave. Sam McLeod. Here. Sarah Isinger. Hello. Here. Katie Zobel. Here. Wel welcome. First Thank meeting. You. Thank you. <laughs> Diana Stein. Here. <clears throat> Thank you. And yeah. now for the Conservation Commission, Anna Gothier. Hi. Here. here. OK. Uh, for the planning board, Andy McDougall. Here. Thank you. For the housing authority, David Williams. Hello. Hello. And for the historic commission, Robin Fordham. There Hello. You are. Here. Hi. And I'm Sarah Marshall. I'm representing LSSE. Uh, so before we get underway with the agenda, we do need a minute taker. I'll do it. Thank you, Sam. I'm getting it out of the way. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, terrific. So that Sam, are you ready? Um, uh, are, we're recording this, correct? Yes. Will I have access, Anthony? Uh, what time frame might I have access to the recording? So normally they upload fairly quickly. I'm not sure why last week's is taking a couple a while, days. But I, what I can do is I can send you a direct a link to the. Uh, just a hosted file beforehand. So two days will be fine. I'll I think I'll operate off that. It's okay. not edited, presumably. I understand. Or, no. no, I'm asking Anthony. It's not the file just nothing. no, it's just it's a VLC file. And then it just gets uploaded. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't see that Sonia is here, but Anthony uh, that's that's correct. Sonia yes. will not be here tonight. She did tell me that there are no changes to the financials at this time. Okay. Um, can I ask that you send out as, as soon as you reasonably can last week's spreadsheet just so we can look at it before our next meeting and just it's a lot of numbers and different categories so especially for the new folks if we even if it's going to be updated next week. Um, that'd be great. Yep. Thank you. Uh, all right. So then I guess we can move directly into the presentations if uh, the presenters are in the audience. Anthony can bringing, let them in. I am bringing in Facility Director Jeremiah LaPlante. Hello, welcome, Jeremiah. Oh, oh, thank you for having me. Oh, well, look forward to hearing about two projects that the town is uh, proposing. Um, so let's just jump right in with the town hall front and side steps, which is submitted under historic preservation. Uh, you can summarize that for us. Uh, we could launch into questions. I think Anthony can probably throw up any of the documents or figures that, that you would like us to see. So yeah. over yeah, to Jeremiah, you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, if you want to have anything on screen, just tell me and I will throw it up. Certainly. I could also give you control if you wanted to do that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> uh, well, yes. Yeah, so, so the first project is, is looking at uh, restoring uh, two sets of stairs at Town Hall. Uh, the first being the front stairs facing Boltwood uh, Ave, and the second being the south side stairs facing the church. Um, as you've, you, you've probably recently seen, if you've been around the town hall area, there's been some wonderful work done on the, the big arch uh, doors at town hall. Uh, and it's, this is really a continued effort uh, to, to keep that, that preservation going with town hall 
and uh, addressing some of the issues that we're seeing with the front stairs. Now the front stairs are in, in a much worse shape than I would say the south, south side stairs. Um, we're, we're having pretty significant uh, detachment of grout on the side walls. Um, you, you can see a lot of infiltration and, and, and some insensitive repairs that have been done on the granite steps. Uh, and there, there has been a lot of settlement uh, in the stairs. So, so some of those monolithic uh, granite blocks are, are detaching themselves uh, from, the, from the sidewall. And it, it almost looks like it's being pulled apart and, and starting to sort of uh, lean forward and, and sort of spread out on either side. Uh, so, so the, the idea is, is to, to, to do a comprehensive restoration of those front steps and, and look at doing the side steps as well. Uh, it, it really, I, the only way to address the front steps is to systematically pull it apart. So uh, we, we've had some work done. Uh, we've been working with an, an architect and they, they did some uh, a draft um, uh, proposals for us. And, and we are sort of at that point where we could look at doing a, a con get construction documents. Uh, but every single one of those uh, veneers, those granite blocks and in, in the larger blocks on the sidewalls would be cataloged. And, and if, if you've seen some of the documents, they've already sort of listed them out. They're numbered, they're lettered, um, all of the sizes that they've been measured. Uh, and those would be pulled apart, cleaned up, and, and then set aside so that, that the, the substructure uh, whatever is underneath those stairs uh, gets removed and, and a new foundation and new fill is put in place so that you can take all those blocks, all, all the granite steps, and, and put them back uh, so they are back to original, but better so because they're, they're no longer uh, pulling away and there's no vegetation growth uh, coming out of, of some of the, the mortar, the pointing. Uh, so it is, it is a, it will be a huge undertaking uh, to pull that apart. I did see that one of the questions they, they uh, was asked about uh, particulars for the mortar and, and by no means am, am I a master Mason, but I'm certainly looking at the project I've learned more and more as I've gone and, and it, but they would have to do some type of analysis uh, because looking, looking at a, a structure as old as the town hall, uh, what, what happens oftentimes is that modern materials are used to repair these older, older buildings. And, and it's just, it's, it's not the appropriate uh, materials to be used. So if we were to look back at the mortar um, from the 1890s, it was probably mostly lime based and, and didn't have the Portland cements that today's uh, mixtures would have. Uh, so, so ensuring that, that we are um, taking the appropriate steps and that we analyze the materials and that we preserve each one of those blocks um, and, and put them back, it's, it's just important for the building uh, in maintaining the character um, in that sort of uh, architectural culture of Amherst. Uh, the south side stairs are in, in better shape to a degree. Um, they are still uh, experiencing severe effervescence. So if you, if you already look at some of the old stone buildings, there's even some of the newer stone buildings, it almost looks like they have this white powdery residue on them. And what's happening is, is those stairs are wicking up all the moisture in the hardscape and in the ground and, and as it moves through the block, uh, salt deposits are getting in. And now those salt deposits start pushing them their way out. And, and that, that will, will damage that granite block. Uh, you, and if you were to look at some of the photos, I did present um, uh, some photos, you can see that it is starting to deteriorate the, the substructure on the south side. Uh, uh, on the front steps, what that substructure is, I, I don't think that it is anything poured, but on the south side, it does appear to have a poured concrete base. So that's why I said that it was in a little bit better shape. 
Um, so uh, I, I guess the, uh, the sort of the, uh, the, the, the general idea of the project is, is to really um, take those stairs and, and uh, continue our efforts and, and, and put those stairs back in, in the best shape that we can so that the town can continue welcoming its townspeople for another hundred years. So that's, that's this, the steps. Okay. Um, now, the other project that I was looking at is, is doing some uh, restoration on the slate roofs. Um, so they're I'm out one, one <laughs> Those, project at a time. Yeah, we yeah we take we just tackle them one at a time. So okay. Otherwise, it's you know we'll be lost in information. It. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I will uh, thank you for that. I'll ask the committee just to throw up a hand if you have. All right, Andy, you can unmute. Thank you, uh, Sarah. Thanks, Jeremiah, for the presentation. And I apologize if these were in the written answers. I I haven't got a chance to get through my emails from earlier today, but um. Do, the, do either of the stairs cases pose any sort of life safety risk? Or is this, is this really a cosmetic uh, preventative type of repair? Well, well, I, I wouldn't, that's a hard one to say. I, I mean, it, any set of stairs could pose uh, life safety risks in, in them. Um, now, if I, I, I wouldn't say that the front stairs are in, in such disarray in, that uh, one of the blocks is going to come tumbling off. I don't think that. I mean, they, these are some extremely large blocks. Um, some of the, the smaller veneers on the side uh, could, could potentially uh, come out uh, in, in sort of look, examining the stairs and, and picking at it. It, it's there's fill. It's just sand fill beyond these veneers. So there wasn't a solid structure on these sidewalls. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily say that there's that there's life safety risk that that we're going to see some sort of catastrophic failure. Okay. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thanks, Sarah. Diana. I too uh, apologize for not having read all of the information on the stairs because I was out um, until shortly before the meeting. But how thick are these veneers? I, I was amazed that they that there were um, such on granite stairs. Could you tell me a little bit about those? Yes. So so most of the veneers on the side on the side walls uh, are are about four inches thick. Now the caps are as wide as those sides. And if, you, if we start to come closer to the front of the stairs, the, there's, there's solid blocks that are about 18 inch uh, squared. So there's, they're much larger, but the side walls are about a, a four inch thick veneer, granite veneer. Thank you, that's very intriguing to me. I have a question. Uh, am I right in inferring that these are the original steps and they have not been overhauled since they were put in place? I, not to my knowledge. And yes, yes, they are. And not to my knowledge. There, there has been some, some repairs, but as I st stated there, there's, it looks like there's been, there's definitely been some tuck pointing because uh, you could see the difference in the color. Uh, they used a, a very bright red uh, um, mortar for uh, doing some tuck pointing um, that has has uh, crumbled out and you could see the original uh, mortar beyond. Anyone else? Robin. Um, can you speak a little, um, I know we, we, we went over this in the historical commission meeting, but a little bit more to the um, town funds that are available for this project? S certainly. So the town has uh, some capital funding uh, a set aside for exterior maintenance and building envelope repairs. And I did try to separate the two of them and say, okay, this is building envelope repairs and, and use a separate bucket for, for the, the um, uh, exterior maintenance. So if I was to look at building envelope repairs, it's, it's roughly about $120,000. But this is not building envelope repairs, right? 
the it, stairs. It, it's the stairs. I would consider it building it, em, really? the, okay. it building envelope. Yeah. If we were to if we were to look at the exterior maintenance, I, there's about 50,000, 50, maybe a little over fifty thousand. And is that that um, fund for the town hall specifically, or all town buildings, or that that would be town hall specifically? Now that that is a, a six different line items, um, and I'm just sort of pulling them all together. So I, I think, as I said in 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 the historic historical commission now if I was to look at all of it it's about 170 but that's that's me quite literally turning my pockets out and and it, it is a building from 1890 and we need to uh, expect and, and, and prepare for other other items so um, you know I, I really do kind of need to hold on as much as much as I can. Katie I think you had your hand up earlier so Diana if you don't mind. You need to unmute. Just, um, Jeremiah, I'm not totally sure I'm following. Um, the 120,000 is the maximum you have for envelope repairs, but you're saying that you wouldn't necessarily put all of that. You wouldn't want to, or you're not intending to, or you couldn't put all of that. Uh, is that what I'm understanding? Well, I, I would, I would have to hope that um, that everyone would agree that with having a, a building of that age. It's it's been inc incredible right. that the town has put set aside money. Um, it it isn't what for one particular particular item, but but to take it all and then start at zero for a building of that age would be would be almost damaging. It would be very extremely hard to. Mm -hmm. I have to assume that there's going to be other work coming down the line. Um, S so I, I couldn't agree more. I don't, I think um, from what I understand, but maybe is, is this an, is this a, um, a line item in the budget that's, so it's an annual line item or it's, you're saying it's what you have. It, it, that, that is what a, an aggregate in, of the capital funds. So there is a, a one particular line item that was a hundred thousand that was set aside for the stairs. Um, but right now it's it's around seventy four thousand because some monies were used uh, to get those those draft documents as well as help with the door. Got it. Okay, thank you. And Jeremiah, yes. Oh. So oh. The, the second part of Katie's question: it's not an annual item. This capital, right? Its capital is one year. When he said capital, I thought, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a capital yeah. budget. I Got think it. It's a line in the yeah, Diana. Well, I, some of this you've already answered, but I was wondering what else the um, monies were. You said something about 170000 but that sum had been spent, and then you talked about the drawings. So that took some of the money. Are there any other line items that we would be interested in hearing about? Uh, other line items for that would go towards the stairs or, or, no. or just other other envelope um, issues yeah. that 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 may yeah. use that money right yeah. well uh, the next project has some is for repairing slate roof on mm -hmm. town hall okay. so some of that money could certainly go to uh, the restoration of the slate roofs um, some of the other areas that I've I, I've seen walking around town hall uh, uh, there's definitely some window issues, uh, particularly on the, that basement or ground level. Um, you could see there's uh, some significant uh, damage uh, on, on a few of those windows. And, and the, that's a, a sort of project that I would like to uh, look at starting to address. Because uh, again, you can't, you can't allow that, those items to uh, sit for very long like that. Um, it's, it's only going to cause uh, bigger issues and that costs more money. So the sooner that we can get to them, the better. Thank you. Rob, sorry, Robin first, then Andy. Robin, you're muted. What What is the urgency of the uh, front steps versus the south steps? Well, the south steps are essentially used for staff only. Um, it would be more so for like emergency egress. 
where the front steps are used by, oh, well, in normal circumstances, yeah. <laughs> by the townspeople every single day. Uh, so there's, there's a much greater uh, a need to repair this, this, the front steps. And plus, I would have to just say that the front steps are in worse condition. Um, there is there is a, a lot more um, um, damage uh, or in I really should say deterioration. There's more deterioration in in the front steps than there are in, in the south side steps. Andy, thanks. Um, a couple of quick ones, just on the. Um, the budget, do you have any, uh, any contingency planning? Do you anticipate any unforeseen? Or I mean, with something that's you know, over 100 years old, I'm just wondering whether, you've, um, whether you feel like you've got that adequately covered in your, in your request. Um, I, I, I like to allow for some, but, but not, not inflate. I, I would have to say that the the amounts that I give is is a fairly honest amount. Um, the The only thing that I would probably have to I would be concerned with is is if we were really needing to true up some of the steps, if there was consideration for honing them. Um, I don't think that the front the front steps have that much wear. Um, but, you know, having another professional eye um, look at them, those would be some, some of the things that I would be concerned with because uh, we would want the same block to go back. So if they did have to do any honing, that would obviously have to be done off site or at least in a safe area that's, uh, that, that would be more appropriate. So a staging area. And, and I, don't, I don't see that happening on at least on the the town hall plot or possibly the the common so okay that would be something that i'd be concerned with all right and then and then the other quick one is just would you would you consider splitting up the proposal and just only only tackling the main steps and not the south if, if i would uh, i would i th i think that the now the south side steps is much less money but i think that we could pro prolong uh the life of them um, okay. They are effervescing, and they are there is some spalling. But if we can manage, if we can manage that that moisture uh, somehow, um, it, it, it might be uh, just trying to uh, add, add some drainage or a canopy. <laughs> but but if we could somehow get the moisture in in that precipitation away from those stairs, it will prolong the life of those. Okay, prolong the life of them. Okay, uh, so I'm wondering then on the estimate if that might be something, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask, but you know, if that's something, if you might be able to sort of tease that out so we could we could compare that as like option A and option B, might, that might be useful for us as we, as we consider all the other projects too. Yeah, given some time, I could certainly do that. I, I thought I saw them broken out. I thought the South Step was about 55,000. I mean, the, the permitting, the architectural, set, like the permitting material storage, which is the, the 90,000 is, is not. And if that's a, a flat cost for both, then maybe we're fine. And we can just, I mean, I just see the four line items. Yeah. Um, and, and again, the biggest one, not. Um, okay, well, thank you again, Jeremiah. Thanks, right, Sarah. Sam. A, a couple questions. One following up on Katie's inquiry on the budget. Um, do you know, happen to know, I don't know if you would or not, what the typical contribution is from the town annually towards that envelope fund? That is to say, is 10,000 put in in a given year uh, distinct from the capital accumulation? Any idea? Or is it just- uh, I don't, it would, if, but if I were to look at the, the capital, um, our, our funding report, it, it does appear that there is some money going in almost annually. So if I was to look back as far as 2016 I, on the list, there might've been 7,000. Then there was 10,000 in 17 or, or 30,000 in 18 and there's some in 19 and, okay. and uh, 2,000 there was the 100,000. So, so it is, 
it is a, there, there, ha, there is a commitment by the town to set aside money uh, for those building envelope repairs. Um, but, it, but it isn't a fixed amount. It has, it has changed, I think, with different um, ideas and, and projects that they would like to see uh, addressed. Yeah, quick comments, one's a follow up to Andrew's comment uh, regarding the side steps and separating the two out and the urgency. Um, from your perspective, would you or do you see any savings cost efficiencies by doing both at the same time? Would you envision, um, you know, if you had the bids broken up versus together, would you guesstimate any form of saving and what might that be by doing the two together? Would you save five to 10% on the side steps if they were bundled in or not? Uh, any ideas on that? I, I wouldn't be able to put a, a percentage on that. I'm, I'm not really sure, but any anytime that you can sort of bundle up a couple projects, you should be able to create some savings that way and, and reduce your costs. And I think what I did mention in, in the, um, a slate proposal or that write up as well is you also create consistency uh, by having the same contractor do it. So two different projects, you're going out, you're going out to bid on for those two separate projects. Now you might have this one very specialized stonemason for this one project, and you might have someone different who could be qualified and reputable as well. But there's, there will be, there could be a lack of consistency in the quality um, uh, of the work and the craftsmanship. So those are some things that that um, should be considered. Final question, and I'm not sure if you have a, a awareness of this or not. <clears throat> um, are there new, you know, processes or technologies, whatever you want to call it, uh, that would enhance the longevity of the stairs. I recognize that it's granite that we're talking about, not that much you can do. And I understand that the mortar, there's a lot of uh, polymers and things that might work. But what about on top of the stairs? Uh, is there anything out there that I might not have heard of or others uh, that's relatively new that actually you can put on top that extends the life? I'm curious, uh, I'm, I'm unaware. That. For for a lot of stone, you almost have to treat it like a living, breathing uh, uh, organism. It, it I, I know that in some preservation uh, in, in buildings, a, a sealants will be put on it because you know water tends to be the enemy of, of, mm -hmm. a, of a lot of th different uh, uh, things. Um, but but. You you have to you have you it if you plan ahead and, and it's structured and built right with the, the appropriate materials, it should be able to take that moisture and redistribute it and kind of push that out, rather than if you were to seal it or if you were to to uh, maybe apply some more modern technology uh, onto that block or or in the pointing you could actually be trapping the moisture rather than allowing it to sort of naturally come out of that block. And a lot of those, those blocks are going to um, uh, absorb, absorb a percentage of moisture as it rains, as it snows. And, and it, that's, that's, a natural, that's a naturally occurring thing. You want that to happen. But once it does pull in all that moisture, you also want it to be able to naturally get rid of that moisture. Um, so I would just be concerned with it. I, and again, I'm not, I, by no means am I a, a, a specialist in all, but I know that that is one of the, the issues that a lot of uh, these older buildings face. Is we have to rely on the experts if you happen to, if there's any information that the contractor or even architect for that matter provides or makes available, uh, if, if it existed, I'd be interested. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I've read a few wonderful articles about it, and I'm I've been searching for more and more. It is it is fascinating. Yeah. Well, if no one else has an a burning question, I think we should move on to the roofs. Is that all right? I don't see anyone 
looking unhappy. So, all right, <laughs> Jeremiah, if we can move to the next also historic preservation proposal, which is to do repairs on three slate roofs on town buildings. Yeah, so the, the second project that I, I submitted for was looking at three of the different town buildings uh, in, in restoring the slate. Uh, each of the buildings have, has a different degree of needs. So uh, the three buildings are the Town Hall, uh, the Munson Memorial Library, and the North Amherst School. Um, and they all, they all have very different slates. Uh, so the, the town hall has the New York red. So it's a, it's a fairly mm -hmm. rare uh, uh, quarried uh, tile um, that, that was, um, that's quarried out of the New York Vermont line. Um, so from what I hear, it's, it's uh, hard to come by, which also means that it, it can cost quite a bit more. Um, but it, it the, the town hall, the, it's sort of the, the sort of same narrative goes for, for the front steps, you know, the town hall sits on a common and, and, and again, it's the building has been there for, for over a hundred years. And I, and it's, it, and it is so important to, to really preserve that, that architectural culture of the town um, and, and have this, these buildings looked at and repaired. Uh, the town hall does have some, uh, quite a bit of, of tile damage. Uh, and there also is a, a small section of tile that's in the shadow of, of the tower that was replaced with a gray tile. Um, and it would be nice, and, for, I, and I just say, it would be nice to have that restored back to the original red. Now, the, the reason that tile was probably changed out to a gray is that just due to the fact that that tile is so hard to come by, it's not that it's not quarried, it's just much more difficult to get to, to acquire the tile. There was probably a greater need somewhere out in one of the bigger fields. So they took from the tile that you wouldn't see and, and put those, those good tiles somewhere else and just replaced it with a gray. So the, uh, the proposal uh, lists not only some tile replacement, but also uh, includes some of the, um, the snow barriers because we ha do have some areas that, that couldn't use those barriers just to make it more safe for the individuals uh, walking um, along the sidewalks. Uh, over at, at Munson Memorial, that building was evaluated. It has a, a, a much thicker tile. Uh, it's about three quarters inch thick and it's, it's almost a gradient. So uh, the closer you are to the, the edge of the, the roof, uh, there's more exposure of tile. As you approach uh, closer to the peak, there's less exposure of the tile. And I, I don't remember exactly what I variegated maybe, or I, I'm trying to remember what the terminology was for the, for the tiles. Uh, but the Munson Memorial does have some missing or damaged tiles. What it needs probably more is some flashing. And in, in particular, the ridge. So the ridge is a, a, a slate tile ridge, um, but there is some issues that are happening with, with that ridge. Uh, it is starting to lift a, a bit uh, and, and it's in shifting. When it shifts and lifts like that, then it, it, it will allow for moisture or to penetrate into the building. And that moisture can then do damage to the wood below and hopefully not get to an interior finish but that would be the next stop. Um, that the proposal that I submitted also included a new copper gutter for the back. It does have a small, a small aluminum gutter off the back, uh, but it isn't really appropriately sized, and it's not pulling away enough of the the water away from the building. Uh, Munson has had some water infiltration issues, but a lot of that is along the the foundation. But where does that water start? It starts on the roof. So if we can control the water that's shedding off the roof, then we can control the water at the foundation. Uh, so it's just an extension of, of that, um, the efforts to, to keep the water out of the building uh, and to preserve that. So much less tiles, but more metal work at Munson. 
And then the big animal is the North Amherst School, which after, uh, so I, I brought in a slate tile specialist, roofing specialist, and he had a look at North Amherst School and told me that unfortunately he feels that the, the tile has reached its service life. So most tile that's quarried in our, our area, the New York, Vermont area, has a service life of between 60 and 120 years. Uh, some tile, some of the harder tiles can last up to 200 years or plus. So the, 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 it's a Vermont tile that was put on and it's a, a gray and brown uh, in color. Uh, and what I was told is, is on the back, so uh, on the side, not facing the road, we were sh showing much more deterioration. If we were to look at the North Amherst School, you would, you would see some brown streaking, some darker brown streaking. That brown streaking is the nails that, that are holding those tiles onto the roof. They've rusted and you, you start to see that rust now staining the tiles. And what that means is eventually those nails will let, let loose and we're gonna see more and more tiles slide off. So we have a, a tile itself that has reached its life expectancy, but we also have the way it was fastened. It, it's getting to the age where it's gonna be less safe uh, North Amherst also has a flat roof section, um, and that is a membrane roof. Um, and I don't know exactly, I know it's a white roof, so I'm assuming it's J.P. Stevens. In the J.P. Stevens, a, as it ages, it, it will get hairline fissures in it. Um, and those hairline fissures will eventually allow water to penetrate. Now walking through the space, I really haven't noticed any, any staining on the ceilings, uh, uh, but, but I know that I have, I've experienced um, chasing the, these hairline cracks in, in, in this white J.P. Stevens product. And, it, and it's from that period, it's a, it's, a it's a newer, older roof, uh, we'll call it. So, you know, 20, 20, 30 years ago, this J.P. Stevens was everywhere. It was everywhere. Um, but now at this time, we're, we're seeing a lot of, of, of those types be, being replaced and are usually using like a Firestone product that, that will hold up for 40 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I did combine all of those. It is a huge amount of money. Um, the, the slate roof specialist was looked at North Amherst and said, this is gonna cost 200 plus. And that's removing all of the, that tile and replacing it with like kind. Um, so it would be a, 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 just an enormous undertaking. Uh, the other two buildings, much less so. I'm gonna chair's privilege here, thank you. And say, um, so the North Amherst School is the building at the corner of Sunderland Road and Meadow Street, yeah? More or less, yes. yeah. Street, yeah. Yeah, where yeah. the survival center used to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, clearly the town owns it, but does the town use it? The I town don't... uses it for we. So the 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 upper level is is um, occupied by a renter, uh, and a portion of the basement is is also occupied by a renter. Uh, the remaining section of the basement is used for our uh, vital information and records. So we store a lot of items there. So um, a lot of our uh, human resource files are there. A lot of the inspection files are there. We have uh, our, a lot of election equipment there as well. Um, and I think there's legal stuff uh, stored in a locked room in that location as well. But no town employees work out of that building? No town employees work out of that space. Thank you. All right, others, Andy. I actually wanted to jump on that too, Sarah. I, does, does UMass rent part of the space? I, I think there's, so on this, I, I, I know that I don't, probably don't. So there's upstairs, there's the Community Action Head Start program and there's also REACH. 
I think Reach is the one that's UMass based. Okay. It used I, to be, have, it's the, the Amherst Family Center has been in that building um, that UMass runs. And that's a drop-in center uh, for families, you know, um, but it's possible that it was closed or that it's not, you know, during COVID, I don't know if it's gonna, if it's reopened or not. Yeah, the, the building has been uh, very, the, the occupancy has been very low. So I, I still, I, I go in at least weekly, run water, look, make sure that everything's is in, is sound. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been quiet there. I saw signs for WIC and Head Start and I drove by it on two different windows. WIC where the survival center entrance used to be and Head Start on the back door. Uh, it right. seemed to be that the WIC was appointment based activity. I don't know though, I'm not familiar if they're one of the current tenants or if that was a prior sign. Right. Yeah, so recently, I would say in the last few weeks to a month, there has been one individual that has used that as their uh, base of operations in the WIC uh, space. All right. Uh, I And then the other question I have was just, this is maybe a process question. Um, well, it is a process question, I guess. So all the quotes are from the same company. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many slave roofing companies there are. Um, but just, you know, given the size of it was wondering whether you got competitive bids. And then also it, it looked like just the amount of detail varied. So like the town hall was a little bit more itemized. The North Amherst was really not itemized. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm just curious to know a little bit more about, you know, the, the process. Do you get multiple bids? Are there any questions you have relative to that, that 250,000? I always get a little I always get a little concerned when I see like a really nice even number with no detail behind it. Um, you know, just how comfortable yeah. you are. Yeah, and I I would have to say that the the individual that that helped uh, is is a very reputable uh, slate roof uh, roofing company. Um, the uh, the town hall they did a a drone flyover, and I I have. Uh, some wonderful videos and in, in photos of Town Hall. Um, the other two buildings, I, I just sort of took them and said, come with me, we're gonna go check out these buildings. So the same level of care wasn't able to happen at, at those two buildings. I know Munson, Munson is a little bit easier. It's more accessible. You can see more of it from the ground level. He did climb up onto, um, uh, onto North Amherst, but I agree with you. I, I, I would have to think that that is, it is a, a budget estimate. And if we were to move forward on this, we would absolutely have to not only go back to the gentleman who provided those initial quotes, but look at other um, slate roof specialists uh, in the area. Very good. Yeah. I mean, that, cause this, that, that was the most pressing of the three, right? Um, getting North Amherst taken care of? North, North Amherst is the, the roof that needs replacement. Uh, the other ones need repair. So it's hard to say, you know, what, which one, the, chal the challenge is, is any, old, any of these old buildings, it's like having a car. If you just let it sit in your driveway and you do nothing with it, it's going to not work the way you want it to. So even we have a building, you could say, well, you know, North Amherst, it really isn't serving many people right now. The moment that we leave that building alone is the moment that it, it's it's we're we're going to have to change gears and go. All right, what are we doing with this? Because now we just have a pile of brick that's yeah. just neatly shaped into a building. Uh, so so it's it's so important that that we keep these buildings in the best shape that we can and we keep them occupied because an occupied building is going to last much longer. Very good. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thanks, Sarah. Robin. Um, so can you rank the projects in order of absolute necessity? Um, can any of them wait a year? Can any of them wait two years? Um, I, if, if I were to rank them, 
I, and, and I think I put it in my, the paperwork. I think I put Munson, Munson first town hall and then North Amherst. Uh, and it, and it was not easy putting North Amherst at the bottom, but, but it's also, it's, it's, it's very expensive. So is there, I, I, I'm not seeing staining on this in the ceiling. So in, in the interior finish, I'm not really seeing much water damage. I've been up into the attic many times and I always like to look at, at the different eaves I, it, where, or any of the valleys and see what the wood is looking like. Does it look like there's been water penetration in any of those areas? And nothing, I wouldn't, there, there certainly is issues, but nothing looks new. It looks like it's, it's been, there's been an issue and it could be some time ago uh, n nothing damp or wet, uh, but it, but it also it, that that just means that I need to be up there more often and and really keeping an eye on it because as soon as it happens, it, it really does happen rather quickly. So that order is is probably what I would like to see done um, for for okay. those roofs. Okay. Thank you. Just say hold on, Sam. Before I get anyone who hasn't posed a question, have one. Sarah. Yeah, hi. Um, are you, have you considered it at all a slate, um, you know, composite material that looks like slate? I know there are those materials that are less expensive. Or are you only looking at um, real slate? I've, I've, I really haven't put, invested a lot of time into synthetic uh, slate. Um, and I, I, I would have to say partly is because it would feel less like historic preservation. I, I, and, and just to, just to share some of my own feelings, when I walked up to Munson, I, I thought, wow, what a beautiful building. And then I went, oh, is that vinyl? <laughs> so, you, you know, I know that there is synthetics. I know that there is these different composite materials, but but the work that we're doing uh, and the work that the historic commission is doing is is to to keep th those that 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 character intact. Sure. Um, so it, it it could probably be a, a I think it should be explored for North Amherst probably, but you know I think my heart will hurt a little bit. <laughs> Perhaps it would be. Um, go ahead, Robin. You're still muted. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm not sure if, if it was replaced without slate, it would qualify under the historic preservation. Right. Component of the thing, yeah, so. that was my thought too. I mean, that whole building, you look at, I'm just looking at the picture online right now, like the front has been, um, you know, there's a front entry, like there are other comp parts of that building that have, that don't that are, don't seem to have the historic integrity that we would want, that one would want. Um, yeah, and I just have a, but I hear you. So thank you for that answer. Um, I wanted to ask Jeremiah, do you know if the town has any long-term plan of being a more active user, taking the whole space? I mean, I'm wondering, well, that's my question. I, I, yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't have that answer, but I would be certainly happy to, to try to get that answer for you. I mean, I know it's, it's responsible for the building it owns, but I just wonder how big a priority this is in the town's portfolio. <laughs> so, Sam. Well, I want to reiterate that was what I was going to ask as well. Uh, <laughs> what might the long-term plans for the building be? I think it is an important question, Sarah. Um, and it may not be important in relation to the maintenance of the building. It's a nice building. I went to fourth grade there. I remember it. It's one of the old school buildings that are always under discussion in town. Uh, but, you know, it would be helpful if uh, there was some general information as to how it might be utilized, let's just say post-COVID, 
let's say post COVID, might there be some other, I understand you've delineated some of the storage and other activities, but I think it could be helpful to me and perhaps to the committee uh, if there was further information uh, related to that. Um, and Robin asked the other question I had as well, which is the prioritization, which I think is very uh, useful for us to know as well. So thank you. Okay, Diana, you had your hand up, I think. Oh. I did. I was wondering if the project could be split over two, done over two years, given the cost. The, the pro, uh, for all three or just north? No, I would, I'm thinking about the North Amherst School. And I know that it has functions that are useful or did prior to COVID. Yeah, North Am if you were to look at splitting up North Amherst, could it be done? Yes, but it would be a lot more difficult. So I, it, there's really two parts to the North Amherst. We have the slate roof replacement, and then we're looking at the membrane. Now the membrane, you could probably put that off. The only problem with that is, is that membrane roof should run uh, a few feet underneath those, those, the bottom, those bottom few courses of slate. So if we, if we decided to uh, replace the slate roof, but then do the membrane at a later date, we would run into some challenges. We would have to either try to marry these two pieces of membrane together or remove the bottom three feet of slate so that it can be done proper. Um, I'll, I'll, go ahead. Do the membrane first. You could, you, you could, it, you, you could do it. It would probably more, be a little bit more expensive than the number that's put that, that's on the, that document, that proposal, mm -hmm. um, only because you now are still, you're still handling some slate material. So slate would have to come off and be put down. It, it wouldn't be as if, you know, you're just sort of pulling it all apart and then you're able to do both at, at, one, at one time. So I, you could de you would definitely be able to do the membrane uh, separately first. Um, but but I would anticipate the cost being more than what was uh, on that that uh, budget. Okay, Holly had. Hello, Holly. Whoops. Hello, everyone. I don't know what I just did, but I'm gone. You just turned off your. <laughs> now we can't hear you. There. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I just wanted to clarify something from the beginning of the conversation and I am not a hundred percent certain but I believe that the building envelope repairs line item in the town's budget is for all buildings not just the town hall building the exterior maintenance line items are only for the town hall building but the building envelope repair budget is something that started several years ago because unexpected things unexpected maintenance costs would come up and we didn't have anywhere to pull from so we started with like a $25,000 um, appropriation for anything that may come up most years it's only 25,000 but this year it was bumped up because of some of these projects that we know were coming. I, I'm sorry, not this year, but in FY20, it was bumped up to 100,000 because of some projects that we knew were coming down the line. But I, Jeremiah and I will definitely check into it, but I believe that that light item is for all town buildings, not just town hall. Good. <laughs> all right, Sam, and then I hope we're almost done with this. As a follow-up yeah, to, to Andy's earlier question, uh, would you anticipate were a project of this scope to go forward to put it out for bid for multiple uh, contractors? Uh, and I'll await your response. And separately, I do see a question, I think it's from Kathy Shane in the Q&A. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. It would have to go out to, to mul multiple uh, contractors. Uh, and and so, sort of like I said um, earlier with the stairs is breaking up, br breaking it up uh, over years. It's, it's obviously, it's such a great amount of money that it, it really would be a lot easier to, to handle financially. But, but by doing so, you're also um, 
there's those concerns with having that consistency and that quality in your vendors. Um, because three, three different projects means potentially three different contractors. Um, so to, to maintain that consistency uh, over those three projects can be a challenge. And we do have a question from uh, uh, the town counselor who's, who's our liaison. And I, Kathy, I'll just read it out loud. And if Jeremiah can respond. Uh, it's several questions. Might there be a plan to sell the North Amherst school building in the future? Can the town rent storage space elsewhere? If UMass discontinues the family center, what is the plan for a new occupant? The hours open are very limited, even pre-COVID. A larger entity rents and then the other occupants pay that entity. Has, has the rent included any allowance for repairs? Uh, I, I don't have that information, unfortunately, on hand, but that'd be certainly something that I could get for you. Anthony, are these questions somehow preserved? Or do we? Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. Should I take a picture with my phone? <laughs> picture of the question. I mean, you just read. You just read it. So. Oh, that's right. So it. Right. Have it so it's right. recorded. Yeah. yeah, but I'm. I'm not sure that. I'm not sure that there are answers to those questions right now. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't, to my knowledge, we don't have any plans for disposing of any town property until the E Street School is dealt with. Um, if UMass discontinues the family center, we would, we would have to lease it through a competitive process um, like we do any other property. Um, same for renting storage space. We have to, we have to bid it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Robin, yeah. Um, just a quick question. Um, I'm just wondering if there's been any exploration um, for outside grants um, for historic preservation. I'm just thinking of the Mass Cultural Council and the Historical Commission. And I know Preservation Mass, I think has a new matching grant out to find additional funding. Um, for any of these projects? For any of these, yeah, yes. yeah. Not that I'm aware of, but but I, I don't have all of that information. So that would be something I would have to look into further. Okay. Okay, then I think that wraps it up for these two town projects. Jeremiah, thank you very much for coming and answering all our questions <laughs> right on the spot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate okay. you having me. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. And then our final presentation for the evening will uh, be given by Barb Bills, the director of LSSE, and she's going to talk about the proposed lower pavilion at Groff Park. Hello. Um, I don't see hmm, video. There we go. We hear you. Yeah, we're coming. There you are. <laughs> How are you? Hi, everyone. How are you tonight? Thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. Uh, the proposal that I'm going to speak to you tonight about is one that would fall under the recreation category, obviously. And that would be the removal and replacement of the pavilion on the lower level of Groff Park. Uh, it, the proposal includes uh, not only a demolition, but a replacement of the structure with a similar prefabricate, prefabricated uh, structure that is very similar to the one that we have on the upper level of Groff Park. Um, the, it would, this particular structure would sit on a cement concrete floor and would be level to the ground. The existing structure there is in really a dire state of uh, repair. I don't know, Anthony, can you bring up <laughs> the photographs of, of the existing pavilion at Groff, please? And while he's doing that, well, I don't know, slip in a question. Is this pavilion the same size as the one at the upper? Yes, it would. I, 
Um, that's my, my understanding. I've worked with uh, the planning department at DPW on this, and um, it is uh, very close, the same size as the one that we have on the upper level, if not the identical size, depending, this would project obviously would still have to go out to bid. So um, we would be hoping to get the same contractor, but because, because it's going out to bid, we, we don't know that for sure. But you can see the existing structure um, for what it's worth. Uh, it, it is a roof, um, but it doesn't um, provide, it does provide some shade, but not much uh, shelter from rain, uh, particularly it, it leaks apparently quite a bit from uh, what I've been told from people who have rented this structure in uh, recent years. So it's in a pretty rough shape. Uh, it sits directly, as you can see, on the dirt, uh, which makes it, I don't know, just it, there's no obvious way of cleaning it. Uh, it's pretty rustic. Like I say, we think it's 30, 40 years old, but it could be actually quite older than that. We're not sure. So it's heavily used, um, uh, even in the condition that it's in. Uh, Pre-COVID, it was rented on a weekly basis at least. Uh, we have within one mile of Groff Park, you probably know this, is uh, an environmental justice population. So it serves uh, a great need in the community along with uh, a lot of different outside groups, including nonprofits in our community and schools, et cetera, that utilize the site. Uh, so we're asking uh, for $45,000 in this request. Uh, we've done our due diligence, making sure that the, we built in a contingency fund so that we'll have enough money to complete this project with those amount of funds. So it's a pretty straightforward proposal. If any of you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Barb. Sure. Uh, questions, please. Mine was answered. Andy, whoops, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. Please raise your hand. Andy raised his hand. I, 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 I mean, it was a joke anyway. You don't just want to paint it. I mean, it looks <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> why not? Very you can put a little lipstick on a pig. Why not? <laughs> it is useful. That, I think that's been there quite a while, Barb. I seem to recall some events with Boy Scouts at that nope. location back in, in the uh, 70s, uh, unless it's been replaced. Uh, no, I don't think it's been replaced. <laughs> So yeah, we were trying to do some research on how old it was, but that's why I think I put 30 to 40 years, but I think it's much older than that. Diana. Wondering, um, the one that's being uh, used that you're going to replace this one with, have there been any problems, anything you would change in this new uh, replacement? We have only gotten compliments uh, about that structure. People are extremely pleased um, with that structure. Um, Anthony, can you bring that photograph up? Uh, but you can see it's it, you know, it's 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 got great seating. It's it's shade. It's well built, easy to maintain. It's just a great uh, pavilion. And I would think this the concrete pad is. Um kind to anybody with mobility issues. Correct. The concrete yeah. pad uh, would sit level to the ground uh, to provide mo you know, mobility to uh, for individuals with accessibility issues to come into the pavilion. You can get a car down there without much problem. So you, you could, someone who had accessibility issues could access the pavilion that way. Um, we did not include an accessible pathway into the uh, into the pavilion down there because it would be extremely expensive and uh, permitting might be an issue. Andy? Yeah, actually, I had a real question this time. Did the, um, are, th does the budget include uh, the seating as well? Like what you have here in this pavilion or is it just the pavilion structure? Um, I believe there's enough money in here to do this seating as well. Okay, and then maybe something similar to this. So three or four table or four or five tables? Four or five tables, right. This, this is about the same size as what you'd be looking to do? Yes, yes. Great, thanks Barb. Mm -hmm. Thanks Sarah. Sure, hey, everybody, all the boxes are smaller now. So yeah, thank you. Thanks Anthony. Any hands? Okay, I've, I've got some more. You said, um, 
that if if this proposal is approved, you'll send it out competitive bid. Does that mean that you might not end up with the same uh, struck the same supplier of the structure? It might be a somewhat different pavilion, or or it'd be the installer who might change. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. We'd be hopeful that the um, the contractor would be the or the vendor would be the same vendor, and uh, it's they are on the state bid list, so. I think uh, there's strong possibility it will be the exact same structure. Mm -hmm. Might you include that request as a part of the bid that the structure be the same as the existing, regardless of who wins the bid? <laughs> I'm, 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 fine. Yeah. I'm not sure we can be that specific, but uh, I'll leave that up to, to Anthony. Can you myself from any other? I couldn't hear you. Is the pavilion itself from Emmy O'Brien or was it just the seating? I believe it's uh, Emmy O'Brien is still as well. Yeah, and Emmy O'Brien is on multiple cooperative contracts. Right. So we would probably source them. Yeah. Can't, imagine, can't really imagine. <laughs> Barb, you said the. Point, Sarah, that the point Sarah made. That's why I'm following up with that. I, it would be great for them to look the same given that they're <laughs> in the same location. Absolutely, I agree. Barb, you said it'd be very expensive to put in a path. Is that because of the grade change? It would just have to be very long and wide. Yeah, I think it's, it's a combination of that as well as I, uh, the permitting issues involved. Um, Dave is on and he could speak to that if, if you want to chime in, Dave. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, yeah, Barb really kind of kind of covered this, but yeah, um, I think in the future we would definitely look to try to make the lower pavilion accessible, fully accessible. Uh, obviously, the upper pavilion, uh, the the spray park, and the and the playground are all fully accessible, um, but you would add a very significant cost. Um, I would not be surprised if I would not be surprised if you're talking sixty to maybe maybe even a hundred thousand dollars to get down that hill with a switchback accessible trail. Uh, we also would have to um, address uh, the issues that the pavilion, as well as any new trail, uh, is in the riverfront of the Fort River. So anything within the first hundred feet or 200 feet actually of the, of the Fort River would need to be permitted, which is all doable, but would add to that expense. So I think we're looking at this in phases saying, can we replace the pavilion to match the upper pavilion? And we may come back to you in, in some years down the road and say, hey, does it make sense to make that lower pavilion fully accessible? Um, as Barb said, uh, in certain cases, if, if the upper pavilion is, is being used, there may be accommodations whereby if there was somebody with a disability, we could allow them to access the lower pavilion. Uh, if you fund it, the new lower pavilion uh, via car or, or van. So I think that's our hope. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions? I have one about the rent. I don't know what is charged for renting out the pavilion, but would you be wanting to charge more to rent a brand new lovely pavilion or not really? And, um, and is this more it, it really to just incur, to encourage responsible use or is it to no, cover that, costs in some yeah. way? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, our prices have remained fairly stable over the years uh, we have always charged less for the Groth Park Pavilion, but now that obviously um, less than we charge for Millville from the for the Mill Pavilion. But um, you know, if we brought it up to a standard like Mill, then I think we'd bring it so that they were all the same. Both both pavilions, both parks would be the same. Okay, I don't see any more hands. So thank you. Thank well, you, thank you. I think thank you very much. That's it.
Appreciate being here. Have a good evening now. Okay. All right, so that concludes the presentations for tonight. So we can take public comment. Uh, if there's anyone wishing to make a comment at this time, I would note we will have a public hearing, I think in two weeks. Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure what the difference is, but <laughs> is there anyone who would like to speak? Uh, Meg Gage is raising her hand. I'm gonna- Is she? Okay. Meg is here again. I'll allow her to talk. Meg, you can unmute yourself and- I, I think I just did. Yep. Great. Um, uh, I'm Meg Gage. I live in North Amherst, and I'm the chair of the Participatory Budgeting Commission. And we're looking at ways that uh, everyday residents of Amherst can participate in more meaningful ways in budgeting. We've been spending the last many months working on it, and we have some months ahead. Uh, and the, we're looking, one of the areas we're looking at is some of the existing town committees, particularly because of COVID, it's unimaginable that we would create a whole new program <laughs> uh, needing funding. Um, and it's been educational for me to actually submit a proposal to the CPA, um, which hasn't been considered yet, but I'll just give you some feedback as, first of all, noticing that most of the proposals don't come from the community, they come from various branches of government. Uh, having gone through this process, the timeline is extremely short it's almost uh, luck if you find out when the deadline is. Um, it's not very well advertised. Going through the process, um, mixed signals, uh, interpretation of criteria that aren't written out anywhere or clear. Uh, so I really encourage you whether or not, whatever happens with the Participatory Budgeting Commission to really, if you, you know, as you say Community Preservation Act, it's hard not to put air quotes around the word community. Um, and I know it's hard, I appreciate all the hard work you do and the hours and hours that you spend reading and asking questions and thinking about our town. Um, but I really encourage you once this process is over to spend some time trying to figure out how to engage actual people in the community. Um, the people who, I appreciated all the projects that were discussed tonight, the roofs and the Groff Park, um, but the rest of us are, you know, Starting the starting line is further back because we don't know how the system works and we don't know. We talk to people, we rewrite the proposal, turns out we talk to the wrong people or whatever. So I just encourage you to think about trying to uh, build on the word community in your name of your committee uh, and going forward. Thank you. Thank you. I would say we do very much want to do those things. So <laughs> yeah, I think this seat, we're going to be taking a look back at this current season. Um, it, it's my hope in, in a, you know, in a month or two. So um, we do have, we do have some ideas for right. getting the community more involved, but I think thank we're you. encouraged. We might have conversations. The commission might be engaged in some conversations with some of you as well. We have some ideas but we've, you have better ideas probably. We've set up an outreach quote unquote subcommittee, Sarah and myself and previously Nate Buddington. And uh, I know Kathy Shane uh, had an interest in some suggestions and it's certainly a motivation from what we've been talking about to speak with individuals and organizations like yourself. We got set back based upon the whole 2020 phenomenon. Uh, but, uh, you know, up and through now during my participation in the committee, it's certainly an objective uh, that I've um, heard positive comments from others on the committee that we uh, find ways to broaden awareness. And we're, we're trying to work on that, uh, uh, whether it be the just visual, whether we put our signs out in Facebook or more pragmatic speaking to groups and we've talked to a couple of groups and I'm sure uh, a number of us on the committee would be glad to carry on a conversation with you. I know I would, Meg. I believe Great. Sarah would. Uh, so this so can proceed further. Thank you. So having my work before I retired was related to uh, funding proposals and you know there's some people, some groups need help developing a proposal. 
Uh, and it's, it's some people are operating with blindfolds if they don't know how the system works. And uh, right. right. So yeah. we hear you. Okay, we hear you. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have some work to do. We we recognize that, and I'm sorry it's been opaque and uh, well, um, not everyone's in the know. Uh, Robin uh, maybe has a response or oh, I just yeah, yeah. I wanted to have a, a, a just a short response that I think there's also been a shift in the shift in the um, application period, and it seems it seems yeah. like things are much more compressed right now, and we definitely felt that on the historical com commission and took note of that and are thinking about um, actually exactly what you're bringing up sort of how we can have more interaction between the commission and applicants before proposals come to review, so. Thank you. Um, one, just one additional thing, if you could, def you know, the, the chart that you showed uh, at your last meeting, which I, I'm not on the screen, so I can't, I'm gonna hold it up for you to see, with the eligible uses, they're just one word and it's hard to know what they mean, like preserve and acquire and support and create, uh, you know, we, it's just, those are words that need de definition. Uh, they apply differently to historic recreation and housing. Anthony. Uh, I, I'll, I'll point out that the chart is a, is a quick reference. We do have an entire CPA plan that has definitions of each of those aspects. If, if, you, if you go to the oh. CPA plan document on our website. But, but many of these things are, are a little bit murky. It's not always obvious what is meant or what kinds of projects qualify, I, so. I appreciate that, because I didn't yeah. know there was a document, so I'm gonna find it this evening, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw Katie's hand, but no? Oh. Robin. I just wanted to say um, thank you to Meg for her comment, and um, I'm brand new, and as Anthony knows, I have had a hard time navigating, <laughs> so I can imagine others uh, trying to apply that that could be a challenge. So I appreciate you bringing it. And it sounds like others who are on the committee are aware of this. And I'm glad to hear that, you know, there's been thought and um, an intention to do something different going forward. So thank you. Diana. I was going to ask if Meg, after she reads the CPA plan, could make specific comments or places that she would like to see improved or amplified that could be very useful to have an outsider looking in and that and if or anybody who wished to do that i you know those comments should be emailed <laughs> we wouldn't take them i don't think right no but or no plan to to have a meeting about that but certainly welcome any feedback so i'm just representing our neighborhood association and our steering committee would be happy to do that as a group and write send it in writing not, not just me, I happen to be the one uh, crazy enough to sit in on meetings that go from six to eight. <laughs> okay, that'd be, that'd be great. As far as I know, I think that you would just send it to Anthony at great. this point. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. All right, Robin, did you have one more thing to say? Sorry, you, no, no, okay. All right, then thank you, Meg, for appearing in Wolves see you or at least hear you next week. Yes. Yep. Okay. Any other members of the public wishing to make a comment? Doesn't look like it. Okay. All right, then. Um, for old business, I think we just have a couple minutes uh, discussion about our progress on signs and some language that the town would like us to vote on, have a formal endorsement of language that would go on, on signs. So Sam, I'll turn that over to you. Uh, are you able, Anthony, to place the, the wording from the email I sent you on screen? I sent it yesterday. Yesterday. I can read it, but uh, you know, I, I, suppose you know. I could share my screen as a means of doing so. It might not be as clean as. Probably, honestly, it's probably faster to share my screen. Yeah, I think okay. so. If you have it ready to go, uh, I can yeah. grab it. Let me. Uh, I'll find it. Okay. 
So this is, uh, we, we have seen various examples of signage, but we recognize that those are simply very rough mock-ups and it's the wording uh, that is needed at this point. And the intent is to have the committee enable the town to go through their processes and proceed further from here. So uh, with that as a backdrop, uh, I move to approve the wording. This project or actual project name was supported by a Community Preservation Act funds, comma, insert the year, town of Amherst, Massachusetts for CPA signage and to request that town staff proceed with getting quotations and plans for procuring various types of signage, including plaques, permanent signs, and banners. Do I have a second? I will second it. I, I can do that, right? So Sam and I are the subcommittee. <laughs> All right, so would Just anyone? Mm -hmm. I have a okay. question too. Anna. I was, I was, oh, I'm sorry. I was first. It's okay. Go ahead, Andy. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. uh, my, mine was just really easy. I thought like it might, this may just be my own style, but uh, having the town of Amherst before, so this project or whatever was supported by the town of Amherst Community Preservation Act funds. Mm -hmm. I think that might just read, a, I mean, for me personally, I think that that, that reading makes more sense, but uh, I'm no uh, grammarian and, and would defer to to the committee, but this would, was written based on the uh, sign examples, the green one, if you can recall, I could show it again. Uh, the the town of Amherst Mass was actually part of like a logo that appeared uh, lower on, but it included in phraseology. I'll, I'll show one very quickly here. If, uh, if it's not uh, problematic, hold on. That would help a lot, that, that might clarify this for me. Where Next. might I have them? Can I make my comment while Sam is pulling that up? Yes, go ahead, Anna. So, so I think my, my maybe, I don't know if it's a suggestion, but my question is if we added something like your Community Preservation Act funds, I mean, this is something that's really, it's supported by the community and, and to not acknowledge that feels like it really separates it from the community. And, and I'd love to acknowledge that, you know, this is something that's built through, through what we pay in. And so um, I'd love to have something like, through your Community Preservation Act funds or something like that, that kind of gives ownership to the town so they can see themselves in the projects. I have a similar Ray, comment. Put this back up here. Sorry, so please raise see. hands. I can't tell who's yeah. speaking. Okay. Sarah, Sarah, go ahead. Yeah, I had a I'm, similar comment to Anna, which was something like paid for by, you know, the taxpayers of Amherst, but I like your as well. I thought I heard a, another voice or Diana. <clears throat> you're you're muted, Diana. You're still yeah. We don't hear you yet. <laughs> we don't, Diana. We can't hear you. Okay, once you find, <laughs> raise your hand again when you have found your, your mute. Okay. All right, um, I can't see the screen far enough down to unmute me. That was the problem. I was wondering if, um, if some of these things are more expensive by the number of words, whether we have to say a town of Amherst or we could just say Amherst, Massachusetts. I like your, I think that's a very good change. And the other thing I was wondering, are there ever banners for um, noting CPA funding? I can't recall seeing it, so I'm just curious. Well, there could be, like at the dog park during construction, something like that. We, the, the thought process is we could use some for uh, temporary projects under construction. Dog park would have worked as well as um, CPC on North, uh, uh, North, excuse North me, Hampton Road. Northampton Road. Uh, that's why we put this in the back. We've seen plaques and permanent signs, but also banners. Okay. 
and I'm trying to edit this to include the word your as a potential edit. And then Andrew was suggesting, well, uh, hmm. No, if I, I, I can clarify real quick, I, I actually love Anna's idea, put your in there and then just Sam, when you brought that up, I understand now. I mean, the, the, the idea of the language there is more the logo than the words is what you're saying, right? Yeah, and they, there were a few different signs. This one, here's an example, oh. let's say this project or the actual name was supported with your, we could say your uh, funds from Amherst Community Preservation Act. This is very generic. It's not actually what something would look like, but the intent is to get phraseology and have the town proceed uh, they'll, you know, we trust they'll make good decisions. They, the projects that they've developed all look good. And, um, you know, there could be a different look for plaques as an example. Uh, Diana Stein had this, this is what the type of look a plaque might be. But if we can get the phraseology down, uh, then this ball can get rolling and we can focus on the, the projects before us. Uh, so um, thank you for your feedback on that, uh, Andy. And this is the edit that I've made. All right, Kate, all right Katie. I, I just had I have two questions. One, since I, I may have missed this in um, the materials, but is this a requirement um, that we have to have a sign or this is something we're choosing to do? We are choosing, we started last year a discussion on the committee of introducing this practice and that it be a requirement, well, certainly in the public projects, easy to do. Um, I'm not totally sure how we get any private um, organizations that receive funds to do it, but we could at least start putting signs on projects that have already been done, like you know, Groff Park just opened finally, you know, where the dog park will be coming up. So, you know, let's just start and see. The intent is to raise awareness of the mm. types of things that we're doing with the hope of both spreading the word. And, you know, the more we can get the word out, the more that uh, there may be more community-based projects coming in our direction, such as what Meg was referring to. Right. Uh, and there would be different types of signs. There would be uh, kiosks that might exist at Groff Park or at Dog Park. There would be potentially plaques that could be non-intrusive inside buildings and there may be uh, additions to the existing uh, trail signs that would just go on the already existing posts. Uh, and if we can approve the, you know, simple phraseology then they, the, the town can generate lots of options for us to consider that they would be adding. So I guess my, my follow-up, you know, my other question is around, you know, determining when the sign goes up because, you know, you wouldn't necessarily put a sign up every time, you know, if say the slate roof was fixed or, you mm -hmm. know, so it, there, there's probably some discussion that has already happened about how to, because it's an additional cost. And I, I love the idea of raising awareness, but I'm just, you know, there's maybe some projects that make sense and some that don't. And and then the last thing I was thinking about when you said the banner and like when, um, when Sarah said, you know, oh, when the dog park was under construction, I'm just thinking you wouldn't want to have the year, I mean, potentially not have the year on the banner, but just say this is brought to you by, or this is funded by the community, so you could reuse it. Um, at different yeah, places. I, I threw the word banner in there to indicate that that's something we want to do as well. It's not actually identical for this. The town would tweak it if we can get the ball rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the actual thought for the banners was your CPA funds at work uh, without a year or a date. Uh, but we want to get them so that it can start um, the ball rolling and getting some real designs uh, and samples and Dave had uh, previously indicated he knew he could think of 25 to 30 town projects that have already been completed where they would like to uh, they can envision quickly adding signs that would work well and this is our uh, means of initiating that right we I think we'll pick the try to pick the low-hanging fruit where it's easy to 
put signs and then, you know, we'll, we'll have to figure it out as we go. But I think the town doesn't want to go out and hire or pay for graphic design services unless, you know, we're telling them what, what we want it to say. So, yeah. so now we have the, an amended motion, basically inserting the word your. So any more discussion? You good with this? I, I think we can always change. We can always yeah. change it in the future, but let's, I would say, let's, let's move on this. Okay, in that case, we'll take a roll call, oops, a roll call vote. For the Sam, amended version. From the amended, yes, language. So all I will ask uh, you to vote in, if you are in favor, um, Please indicate by saying I when I call your name. You may also microphone say on. nay and you may abstain. On. <laughs> All right, Sam. Hi. Dave. Uh, Sarah, I have a question. Well, we just had a discussion about the word banner. Banner or banners for me. I'm thinking something that's temporary. The signage that we are voting on are permanent signage that we expect to be there for years. Yes. Now, am I out of order in raising this question? Well, this um, is a motion. So why don't we just we no. I think we are only voting on the strictly speaking on the language, okay? okay? And we can put it on whatever we want, and we could have different language to go on different items. Okay? We're voting to request that the town also proceed to get quotations and things. So we could. I don't care if we keep banner in there or not. They're certainly aware of the intent to have different types of signages. So. Okay. Well, this is, so this is this is a little out of order, but should we just go back and strike banner from that paragraph? Would that people be happier with that? I'm good either way. Be care? No? All right, let's keep going. Oh, Sam, I... I'm good either way. <laughs> <laughs> your, your call, Sarah. Let's strike the word banner. All right, so we've now amended that motion twice to insert the word your before Community Preservation Act and strike the word banners. All right, so let's do this again. So, Sam. Uh, based on the second amended uh, wording, I say aye. Dave. David. Aye. Robin. Aye. Diana. Aye. Katie. Aye. Andy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Sarah Isinger. Aye. And Sarah Marshall votes aye. Okay, thank you. So it may be some time then till we have designs coming back from staff. So, so we probably won't talk about it for a while now. Uh, now, minutes. We have minutes. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> I said, now he's in danger of being asked to take the minutes every time because these are minutes of uh, our meeting of June 30th. So certainly several of you were not there for that. I know Diana will, is, hasn't yet gotten to the minutes of last week, but will. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so Diana, yeah? Um, those are look like wonderful minutes that Anthony sent, but they're very long. <laughs> Mine will not be that long, but you guys could, talk I, a lot. <laughs> could I request, well, I didn't think we'd all get quoted so much, but anyway, <laughs> could we please have a week, de defer these so I could read them more carefully um, because there was a lot of material there. So. Would other people be willing to wait till next week to um, vote on Anthony's wonderful minutes? 
Does anyone object? Andy? I don't object, I agree. And I, I just, I have one, at least one question. I should say too, my plan is to abstain. I wanna understand the minutes, but I would feel comfortable abstaining. On item two, I'm sorry, wait, item four about public comment, where it talks about Janet, attorney mediator and planning board member notes that this is an unsolved legal issue. Yeah. What, what issue is that? Yeah, I had actually, I was gonna point that out on, okay. for, for both, uh, for both of those public comments, they were about the Jones. Basically, the entire meeting was about the Jones, and I didn't. I kind of assumed it, so I will amend both public comments to note that they were talking about Jones. Uh, similarly, on item two, um, I didn't say what minutes were being discussed there. It was March fifth, so I will amend item two to say which minutes are being discussed. Okay, and then the only other, and it may be in. I also have like I did a quick scan through this. Is just. Um, for the motions, I'm guessing it's in there, but like, do we have the actual language in there? Because just bouncing around, it's like someone amended this and so forth. And uh, just so oh, it's- oh, oh yeah, I included every word of the motions. <laughs> All right, yep. very good then. Those are in there. Thanks, Anthony. And, yep. and of course the minutes would not be so detailed if we didn't have the video now. That was our first video taped <laughs> meeting. And to Diana's point, they, our minutes have never, of course, been this detailed. Um, so not, I don't, I don't think anyone should feel obliged to attain quite this level of detail, wonderful as it is. Thank you again, Anthony. So um, why don't we, why don't we just take them up next week then? Thank you. Anthony, tell me what the, if there is a practice about um, small edits to the minutes. Can people email you those ahead of time or do we just hold on to everything until we take it up during a public meeting? So uh, previously we've said that small edits, especially edits of, uh, of grammar or, yeah, or punctuation, those would be emailed and only major changes should really be discussed. In practice, we've, we've discussed everything but uh yeah i think it's it's fine to just since i'm not a member of the committee to send those suggested changes to me and then it's not an open meeting law problem so if you do have little changes not substantive really you can email those to anthony you can copy me if you want but don't email to all okay is that clear everybody it could be a long meeting otherwise <laughs> well yes <laughs> all right then we will table review of the minutes of June 30th until next week. All right. Um, I have no topics I didn't reasonably anticipate. I would, uh, <laughs> Sam, was I supposed uh, to? Diana raised her hand first. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Or she was I reaching. Uh, just Given the comments that Meg had regarding looking at the plan that exists on the website, I'm wondering if we might place the most up-to-date version on the site. It's not major, but they are going to be looking at it apparently with the intent of making some edits. Well, I did uh, wonder, uh, since, yeah, since we never finalized that document, yeah, yeah. where the current draft is. I mean, I don't know if Nate has it. I don't know if I Anthony think we could has locate it. it. It might it might well be with Nate. It's not with me. Okay. Um, I can reach out to Nate. Okay. It might make sense. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I, I agree. Um, no, we put some real work into that. All right. I so the only other thing I wanted to say is that we will have agenda planning as an item on the agenda from now on. Yeah. So we can float topics for discussion. So, and we've already heard some tonight. Um, so I guess Anthony will take a look at what kind of time we think we might have after the presentations next week. Some of these things might have to wait because we will need to review or decide on, agree on a process for the evaluating and the voting and the, you know, what we do once the presentations are over. So we're gonna need time to talk about that. 
Yeah. Uh, next week is the remaining four proposals, which are the two from uh, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, uh, then District 1 Mill River Trail, and the North Common. I anticipate those could be lengthier. Mm -hmm. But uh, shouldn't, okay. go, shouldn't go over our normal time. And our normal time is six, six to eight, eight, right? We try to, yeah. yeah. Sam. Sarah, I had a oh, I'm sorry, Sarah, Sarah had her hand up. I, I missed the first two meetings the last couple of weeks, uh, um, obviously, because I wasn't here. Um, but I'm wondering if I could, we could add an agenda item where we, uh, and I don't know if this was some people's first meeting. I, I don't, I sort of heard that it was Katie's first meeting. I think it'd be really nice to do introductions and say who we are and how long we've been serving on the committee. Um, I don't know if we have to do that tonight, tonight, but we could maybe be nice to start the meeting next, that next week like that. Okay. Well, I, I will, you know, have everybody introduce themselves at every meeting again in case, because I'm not, sh you know, people see our names maybe, but they don't know why we're here. So, right. Sure. And we'll we do, don't we'll know do each other. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Good suggestion. Thank you. Sam? So um, just as a follow-up then, I'll see if I can locate what might have been the updated edits to the plan, if we can find a document and I would send that to you, Sarah. To well, well, I don't think you would have anything more recent than I have. Um, it we was Nate, it was Nate who was you know, you can reach out doing to the typing. Now. So he's the one to contact. So, I, so Anthony, well, we'll, if we receive it, if we're able to acquire it, send it to you and uh, Anthony, or, you know, should we? You don't, I don't think you need to pursue it. I think Anthony's going Anthony to. Anthony will do it. That's yeah. what I wanted to confirm yeah. if, if it'll be followed one way or the other. Great. I'll let you know on a secret. I've got a Wint tab open right now and I'm emailing them. So. You have a what? Perfect. I have a tab open right now. I'm emailing them. So. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Such a multitasker. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see, is it, uh, so has, if anybody has yet to write any questions, um, to pose to next week's presenters ahead of time so they can consider those and put them in writing, please get those to Anthony very soon, okay, because the sooner they go to the applicants, the sooner we can get the answers back you know, hopefully at least 24 hours ahead of time, so. All right, I think that does it for tonight. Thank you all. Uh, I guess we need formally to adjourn also. So would someone like to I so move, move Diana? We'll move, go ahead. To I move that we adjourn. Robin is seconding, we'll just, Raise our hands. All in favor, raise your hand. Good night. All right, the meeting is adjourned at 744. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you, Katie. Thanks. Yeah, it's good welcome. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.